Welcome! In this tutorial series, we'll take a guided tour of Edison, FL Studio's advanced wave editor and recorder plugin. Use the index in the video information below if you're looking for something specific. In this video, we'll show you how to use Edison's built-in convolution reverb. Convolution reverb is a great way to bake ambience into an audio file or create otherworldly textures for later use in your projects. Convolution is the process of imprinting an audio recording with the sound of another. Every sample in the source file triggers a copy of the ambience file. This is the process of convolution. If the ambience sound is the reverb of a room, then you will get reverb as we'll show. I'm going to use the snare of this track as the demo file. Select the section of audio you want to apply reverb to and then click the reverb button or press Ctrl R on your keyboard. This will open the convolution reverb tool. The reverb recording we'll imprint on our audio is more technically called an impulse response. As noted, these can impart the characteristics of a real room to incoming audio. By default, the display shows a spectrogram, a representation of frequency over time of the loaded impulse response. In this visualization, the horizontal axis is time and the vertical axis is frequency. You can change this in the menu on the bottom left, where you have access to different view options and most importantly, all of Edison's audio editing tools. That's right, you can view this as another instance of Edison that purely processes the impulse response. You can make a selection and process different parts of it separately, like you can in Edison. FL Studio comes with many recordings of reverb from existing spaces that you can apply to your samples. You can choose from one of our pre-made impulses here. Like most reverb effects, the most important controls are a dry and a wet control. Dry means original audio and wet means the reverb signal only. Offset will delay the impulse or shift it early, creating pre-delay or spooky reverse reverb effects. The Add Tail option will let the reverb ring out after your selection in Edison. When it's off, the reverb will stop instantly at the end of your selection. Use Data Outside Selection will take the area surrounding your Edison selection into account when applying the offset parameter. Great! A special technique here is to use white noise as the impulse response, as it will completely blur the sound. We'll grab the keys from the track to do this. Nice! This is essentially what the blur tool in Edison does. And there is a preset in Fruity Convolver for that sound too. There are a lot of sounds that make sense as an impulse response. It does not have to be a room recording. Those who experiment are awarded with happy accidents. Like for example, making your own multi-tap delays. This is a cool trick you can do with impulse responses. Get Impulse Instant from the FL Studio Impulses folder into the channel rack as a sampler channel. Make a long note, chop it, and use the claw machine to make the chops gradually increase in speed. Edit velocities to make your echoes get quieter over time. Then I'll copy that and flip the copy horizontally using the scale flipper tool. I'll also add a piano roll LFO to the panning.
Next, add various effects to it. Then, render. Now, I'll use the result as an impulse response on this short vocal clip. <laughs> Lovely! Now you know about the convolution reverb in Edison and can use it to add space and cool ambient textures to your audio. It's worth noting, the impulse file you convolve with your original audio doesn't have to be a reverb. It can be any other audio file, a kick drum or a vocal sound for example. Why not experiment with it and see what happens? As always, remember to check the video information for segments, any relevant manual or video links and the music used in this video.